Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Easy Skin Tutorials, and this is RZ Tuts 2, 4 of 5. So, this is the fourth video of five videos that's going to be going over how to teach you guys how to create the most badass bullets inside of Unity 3D. This particular episode, we're going to be going over how to add force to the bullets, or basically make the bullet affect a rigid body. So, when you shoot, say, a crate, that crate will move backwards because that bullet has some force behind it. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a variable inside of the bullet script called uh, force or force to add or whatever you want to call it. It really doesn't matter. Um, but basically this is going to be quite literally how much force we're going to be adding to that particular object and how much force is behind this bullet. So say for example you have a sniper rifle and uh, it has a very powerful bullet or very heavy bullet behind it. Uh, you're going to want to increase this force value. Um, so by doing this, we are going to make it dynamic and really work with the physics system that's integrated into Unity 3D. Um, so that means that if you increase the mass of a particular object, that object won't move back as far and basically it becomes really realistic and dynamic and really works with the physics engine of Unity 3D. Um, so basically the way that we are going to do this, we're going to be doing this for both um, the enemy ragdoll and for any objects that we're going to have with inside of our game. We're going to be creating a uh, script called objects with weight or object with weight or something along those lines. And basically this is going to be a very simple script that basically uh, when the bullet collides with an object with weight and it checks the tag and makes sure that it has... Um, this particular script attached to it or whatever type of script is attached to it and then affects that script accordingly it's going to add a vector 3 uh, based on what direction the bullet is facing and moving so we're going to use the um, move direction we're going to convert that to a magnitude vector so that only has a magnitude of 1 and we're just checking the direction that the bullet is actually moving and then we're going to multiply that vector 3 by the variable force so that we get a direction and force um, to the uh, actual bullets. And then we take that variable and we're going to uh, throw it into the script object with weight. And then the uh, script object with weight is going to hold onto that variable until whatever frame, uh, probably going to be the frame after the bullet hits it, it's going to then take that and then apply it into a add force function to itself so that the object actually moves backwards. Um, we're going to be doing almost the exact same thing with the enemy ragdoll, um, but the only real difference with the enemy script is that it's going to wait until the enemy is actually dead before it adds that force. So that way, um, if you get the enemy with a killing hit, and say you get a headshot and you want that enemy to fly backwards, uh, it's going to save that add force variable and it's going to save it until it is or until itself is killed and then it will add that force to the actual enemy ragdoll. So I'm not going to be going over how to convert a live enemy into a ragdoll because I already did that in a previous episode. Um, I'll put the link on the screen right here. And if I forget to put the link on the screen right here, please leave it in a comment below and remind me so that I can put the link right here. So hopefully you can click on this area and go to that tutorial and learn how to create an enemy ragdoll. And I do actually believe that I do go over how to add force to the enemy ragdoll in that particular tutorial. So there should be plenty of information there for you guys to be able to shoot a dead body and make that dead body react to being shot. Um, so that's everything that we're going to be going over inside of this episode. So why don't I cut the camera and go into screen recording and show you guys how to do that inside of Unity. All right, here we are inside of Unity, and the game object that we're going to be applying force to using the bullet is going to be this barrel right here. So, um, let's see, I don't really know where to start. I guess let's start with, why don't we start with the game object? So, let's find it over here in the hierarchy. So, there's two parts to this game object. So, let me turn that off so that we just see this. So first of all, we have the barrel game object right here, and we have the mesh filter so that we know that it's in the shape of a barrel. 
And then we have mesh render so that we can see it. And then we have a mesh collider. All of it is uh, default and it has the barrel on it. Um, so that way the mesh collider is in the same shape of the game object that we're seeing. Um, and then we have the object weight script attached to it. And our object weight script is this script right here. It's really not too complicated, so we'll go over that in a minute. Um, and then we have a rigid body attached to it. Uh, nothing really special on the rigid body. We just have all pretty much everything set to default, except for I made it a little bit heavier than the default heaviness. Um, and then we have the material right here. Um, and those are all of the com components of that game object. And then we have a child of this game object, which is actually what I did was I just uh, duplicated this game object, and then I made it a child of it. And let me turn that mesh renderer back on so that you can see it. So basically we had two game objects that were sitting right on top of each other that were the exact same game object, and that's intersecting with the floor a little bit, so I'll move it up. Now, this game object is the exact same thing. We have a mesh filter, um, except oh, we actually don't even need that animation. Let me remove that. Um, so we just have the mesh filter and a mesh collider. So the mesh filter is a barrel, and it's the same scale. Um, well, I guess it's set to 111, and because a child inherits all of the properties of the transform of its parent, it gets scaled up by 4.03, whatever, whatever. Um, so it's the same uh, scale. So I guess setting it to 111 and using the same mesh uh, and mesh filter is going to give you the exact same game object. Um, and then on the collider, I made it different. Um, what The only thing I changed uh, was that I set it to convex. So you can see this is non-convex, so it conforms to the shape and then when you set it to convex, it kind of stretches over the whole shape. Now, the reason we do that is because of the rigid body. Um, but we want to have um, the rigid body's uh, actual colliders that it uses to be a child so that we can use uh, the parent's mesh collider for the um, actual detecting of the bullet. And then the convex collider is used just for the physics and just for so the rigid body can have collision detection because if we didn't have a convex collider uh, on this game object this uh, barrel would just fall through the floor um, now the next part that is different between these two game objects is that we have this game object right here um, has a tag of object with weight um, and that has to do with the bullet script I'll explain in a second and this game object right here, I have a tag of level parts. Um, actually, why did I do that? I think it... Oh, wait, actually, no, 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 that's fine. Actually, I don't even think this needs to be tagged. I think that can be untagged. But we do want it to be on the layer ignore raycast. Um, so, yes, I'm actually going to change it back to level parts because I don't think it will not work if I have it. I'm pretty sure it won't not work. Actually, you know what? I'm almost 99% sure that it, it will work if we have it set to untagged. So I don't think it matters if we change the tag to this. So you can change it to whatever you want. So I'm going to change it to untagged. All right. So now let's take a look at our bullet script and see what we changed. So actually, I recorded this video twice, and there's only three things that we're adding to this script. So I'm going to go ahead and just go through and just point out what those three things are. First of all, we're creating a variable called force. Um, and it is a float variable, and by default, I have it set to 500. Um, that's, I don't know, whatever. You can change that later in the inspector in case you want your bullets to be stronger or weaker or whatever. Um, and then next we have inside of this if statement right here. So before we had the if statement end right here. So we were just checking to see if the hit that we're cycling through inside of the for loop has a tag of level parts. And now we're adding two vertical lines. I don't really know what those are called, but that stands for or. So that means if this or this is true, then we will go through and do all of this. So I added the or part, which is if hit dot transform dot tag equals object with weight. So basically we're just turning this whole thing into so that all of this will occur if either the tag is a level parts or if the tag is object with weight. And then we have, oh, well, first of all, then it will 
go through and it will calculate to see if it is the shortest distance, distance so far to make sure that our bullet doesn't go through game objects and uh, we're creating the parent so the bullet actually sticks to game objects. That's very important in this case because the object will move after you shoot it. Um, and then all the other po things just to make sure that we have where we want the bullet to spawn and if we found uh, a hit and all of that good stuff. And then we have an if statement outside of that. Actually, I think we could put this if statement inside of here. I think it would work the same, but I'll leave it outside of here. It really doesn't matter. Um, so if hit.transform equals object with weight. So basically, up here, we're saying if it is level parts or object with weight. And then down here, we're saying if it is object with weight. So only if it has the tag of object with weight. Then we're going to do hit.transform.getComponent object weight script dot force to add equal transform dot forward times force. So hit dot transform, or hit is the raycast hit variable that is a result of the raycast. And then we're going to access the transform out of that so that we know the transform of the object that we hit. And then from the transform, we can use the function get component. And then when we write object with weight script, then basically we are, so we found the tag object with weight, and then we are going to access the transform. Then from the transform, we can access the uh, game object dot, or get component, which uh, I guess normally is from the game object uh, class, but you can also use it from transform, which is what we're doing in this case. Um, and then we are accessing the object weight script down here. And then we have the variable force to add, which is a vector three, which we don't actually need to see in the inspector. So we'll, we'll change that. Um, so we're changing the variable force to add to equal transform dot forward. So this is a vector three that has a magnitude of one uh, pointing in the direction that the bullet is moving. Um, and then when we multiply it by force, now we have a vector 3 with a magnitude of, in this case, 500 or whatever we want to set force to. Um, and I believe that's all the script that we're going to be putting inside of the bullet script. So let's go over to the object weight script and see how this works. So first of all, like I said, we don't need to see this in the inspector. So I'm going to go ahead and write at hide in inspector. So the variable is force to add. It's a vector three, and by default, it equals zero, zero, zero. So um, we have inside of function fixed update because you want to handle uh, pretty much most of your uh, rigid body actions inside of fixed update because it works uh, more in sync with the physics engine. Um, then we are going to do if force to add does not equal vector three zero zero zero. Uh, I guess we could also write vector three. Let me highlight it, dot, oops, not slash, dot, zero. Whatever, that would work too. They're bas basically both saying the same thing. Vector three, zero, zero, zero. So if it does not equal that, and we know because of this script that it does not equal that, it now, since we shot it, it will equal a vector three that has a magnitude of 500 or whatever we set force to. Um, so if it does not equal zero, then we're going to do rigid body dot add force force to add force to add equal vector three dot zero. So basically, we're adding the force to the rigid body so that the game object moves, and then we are resetting force to add to vector three dot zero, so that basically this script will now once again just wait around and do nothing until force to add changes because of the bullet script. So. Uh, I think that's pretty much how to set up everything. That wasn't even a complete sentence. But let's go ahead and give the game a run, and I'm going to cut the video while the game's loading, but I'm going to hit play, so the game's loading now. And I'm going to cut the video so you guys don't have to watch the screen loading and all that cool stuff. All right, so the game has loaded. And let me go down here and grab the shotgun, because the shotgun is the game object that we put the new bullets on. And let's go ahead and shoot this, and it worked. Sweet. So, as you can see, uh, let's actually shoot this guy around. And you can see how the bullets are... Let me try to get, like, a good a good shot on it. Like, right, right there. Now, you can see how the bullet is conforming... Well, not conforming, but it's sticking to the shape of the game object, as opposed to floating on top of the um, convex collider, which is used for physics. 
um, and that collider ignores ray casting. So we know the ray cast is going to go straight through it and only look at the actual mesh collider that is the exact shape of the mesh and is not convex. I believe it's called concave uh, is the opposite of convex. Um, and then it is adding force and well, I mean, it's it's working. That's pretty much all there is to it. So I, uh, yeah, I guess that's pretty much all I need to show you guys in this episode. So I guess until my next episode, I'll see you guys later and keep making games.